continuous improvement or change. Though my administration may not necessarily have been familiar with the term at first, we have been practicing our own version of Kaizen for the past four years and 11 months. Among our goals was for our country to become a strong and competitive player in the global economy. This group is slightly familiar with the work my administration has done over the past few years. How we have leveled the playing field, improved the quality of infrastructure, and vastly minimized corruption in doing business. This change has been amplified with the time's trust and confidence, allowing me to once again express our deep appreciation to Japan for staying the course. For even with economic difficulties prevalent in many parts of the globe, you have consistently been among the top sources of approved investments into the Philippines. You are also our largest trading partner in 2014, with total trade amounting to $19.1 billion. The numbers make it clear that many of you have already made the decision to bet on the Philippines. Your confidence has played a significant role in securing the economic success we are experiencing today, success that we share with you. Economic growth has been strong over the last five years, averaging 6.3% making us one of the fastest growing nations in the world. And net foreign direct investments reached a record high in 2014 at $6.2 billion, or almost six times the investments we received in 2010. As of 2013, Standard & Poor's, Fitch Ratings, Moody's, Investor Service, and your very own Japan Credit Rating Agency all considered the Philippines investment grade. And we have continued to receive credit ratings upgrades since. Not to mention the fact that Moody's Investor Service recently stated that the Philippines was the only country out of the 67 countries it monitors with a positive overall banking system. While the Philippines of today is a far cry from the Philippines of five years ago, there remains much to be done. There are other paths that we can pave towards even greater progress, which is precisely why we are here. Japanese companies have already made their mark on the Philippines on the Philippine electronics, shipbuilding, and automotive industries, among others, to the point where their work and their products are already irreplaceable in the lives of Filipinos. Today, I tell you, there is no better time to set up shop in the country. For example, manufacturing has rebounded completely. Average growth from 2011 to the first quarter of 2015 has been pegged at 7.1%. No doubt, this is due both to increased global demand and to the quality of our workforce. Filipinos are young, trainable, and skilled. Companies have entrusted them with producing quality products, from luxury bags to electronics and automobiles, to the components of modern aircrafts. On top of this, I would also like to share with you that last December 25, the Philippines was accorded GSP Plus status by the European Union. This gives the Philippines duty-free access to the entire EU for over 6,000 tariff flights. The Philippines can now be the gateway for your products to ASEAN and to the EU. The IT BPM industry has been one of the pillars of our economic researches. Today, it employs over a million individuals with revenues of $18 billion. While the world recognizes our skill in the voice sector, we are quickly demonstrating our ability to excel in more specialized areas. For instance, back office services, higher up the value chain, like legal transcription, counting, engineering services, and even animation or in Japan anime. Game development is another area we're looking to develop, and I'm certain that Japanese creativity, innovation, and technological prowess can help us maximize the sector. Infrastructure is another area in which opportunities abound. That is precisely why my administration has actively pursued public-private partnerships in constructing big-ticket projects. With nine solicited projects already, already awarded out, and the tenth project expected to be awarded very, very soon, 15 other projects in various stages of procurement and rollout, we have already surpassed the six solicited PPP projects of the past three administrations prior to ours. Further opportunities are present, with 28 more projects in the pipeline for development. Perhaps this is why the economists recognize the Philippines as the most improved country in the Asia-Pacific for PPP readiness as recently as last month. The Philippines as an investment destination is more attractive today than at any other point in our history. We can further deepen or forge partnerships in which all parties benefit. 
our government is at record 247, as well as our sustained commitment to moving this forward. For instance, PPPs are only one way through which we are enhancing the state of infrastructure. Another avenue is the infrastructure budget. When we came into office in 2010, the budgeted amount for infrastructure was equivalent to 1.8% of GDP. Now this number stands at 4%. The goal is to sustain such a trajectory and make the infrastructure budget at least 5% of GDP by 2016. Note that over this span, our GDP has been steadily rising, which makes this increase all the more significant in terms of our cash. We have also focused on enhancing critical transport infrastructure like ports and airports. We have completed construction of a major airport and are undertaking the construction of two more. This is on top of significantly rehabilitating and improving 43 others all around our capital. Seven of 18 tourism ports have been developed. Six are ongoing with five others for implementation. We are also hard at work to ensure a consistent, diversified, and reasonably priced power supply, even as we remain determined to tread green pathways to development. 30 new power projects have gone online under our watch, adding 1,097 megawatts to our power supply. 48 more projects are set to go online between now and 2020, which will add a further 4,693.6 megawatts to our total dependable capacity of 15,665 MHz. In sum, our administration's contribution to our power supply will be at 5,790.6 megawatts. Compare this to the 21 power projects commissioned during my predecessor's nine and a half year term, which added only 1,667 megawatts. The improvement of sectors like power and infrastructure has indeed redounded to the Philippines' increased competitiveness. At the same time, we continue to believe that the most important sector, the most important resource we can invest in is the Philippine people. My countrymen are the reason for our continued success, which is why we have maximized all our resources in empowering them to become direct participants in economic growth. To provide direct assistance to the vast majority of the poorest households in the Philippines, we have expanded and improved the conditional cash transfer program. These households receive cash grants from the government so long as they meet certain conditions, with the primary condition being that their children attend school. From covering close to 800,000 households in 2010, the CCT now benefits 4.4 million households. It has also been further expanded to include even households with children of high school age, because our studies show or have shown that high school graduates earn at least 40% more compared to elementary graduates. The backlogs we inherited in basic education have been eliminated. 2.5 million school seats, 61.7 million textbooks, and 66,800 classrooms. Reforms in education have also been implemented, adding two years to our basic education cycle and bringing it to par with international standards. While these additional years will mean a vast increase in demand for textbooks, seats, and classrooms, through prudent fiscal management, the Philippine government has the wherewithal to meet these requirements. We also have the fiscal space and a policy commitment to ensure that even as we strengthen Philippine children's foundation for learning, we will likewise be able to guide them throughout the next stages of their education. For instance, our Technical Educational and Skills Development Authority has been endowing Filipinos with the skills they need to be employable in today's job market. Everything from welding to animation to the enhancement of English language skills. Specifically for animation, for example, I'm told that job placement has now reached 85.9%. TESTA even works with the private sector to train our scholars, case in point. Their partnership with the Semiconductor and Electronics Industry Philippines Incorporated yielded a 91.26% employment rate for their graduates. Government's work does not stop there. For instance, just like the Japanese government, we have also been hard at work to empower micro, small, and medium enterprises. Significant strides have been made in improving their access to credit, learning programs, and facilities that can assist them in improving the quality of their products. Our Department of Trade and Industry has also been conducting seminars on doing business in free trade areas, which will help MSMEs 
maximize the opportunities that come with greater economic integration. I would be remiss if I failed to acknowledge the significant assistance Japan has rendered in our endeavors. For example, JICA was instrumental in the setting up of my country's first fabrication laboratory shared service facility. This will directly benefit 135 MSMEs involved by providing them access to technologies such as laser cutters and 3D printers, which can help them improve their efficiency and productivity and enhance the quality of their products. Even better, the Fab Lab, Fab Lab will benefit from the continued guidance and mentorship of the prestigious Keio University of Japan. The help Japan has given the Philippines is especially significant in light of our administration's goals. For us, growth is not an abstract concept. We are not content to merely hope that the benefits of growth will eventually make its way down to the lowest common denominator. In fact, we have abandoned the theory of trickle-down economics. We are working to capacitate each and every Filipino to take part in growing the economy and contribute to the success of our businesses and of our country. Those of you who have already established a corporate presence in the Philippines can attest to the caliber of the Filipino worker, to the fact that Kaizen seems to be inherent to our country and that they will do everything in their power to ensure you succeed. They are the reason that we are all gathered here today. The millions of Filipinos back home are the silent partners I represent in inviting you to consider the Philippines. Together, let us explore new ways to spur each other's success and to improve our collective fortunes, contributing to the growth of your businesses, the development of our country, and the realization of a brighter future for the Philippine people. Thank you. Good day. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for your participation in this forum and for your wonderful keynote speech. Thank you.